Good morning. I'm Jan Cope, Provost of the Cathedral, and it is my joy to welcome you to this morning service on Monday, July 13th, coming to you from Holy Spirit Chapel. Let us pray. Lord God, you've brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our scripture for this morning is from the Gospel of Matthew, the 10th chapter beginning at the 34th verse. Do not think that I've come to bring peace to the earth. I've not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I've come to set a man against his father and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And one's foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. Now when Jesus had finished instructing his 12 disciples, he went on from there to teach and proclaim his message in their cities. What a message from scripture today. I will tell you that no clergy person I know would volunteer to do a reflection on the first part of that passage from Matthew, where Jesus is talking about turning one family member against another. The language for this same message in the Gospel of Luke is even stronger. Those who don't hate father and mother are essentially not worthy of me. And it just makes one wonder what happened to the sweet Jesus that we love to hear stories about. Well, like all scripture, context is really important and not more so than in this particular passage. We have to understand it and listen to it from first century ears as opposed to our 21st century ears. To hate would have been a Semitic expression that people of that day would have understood to turn away from or to detach oneself from. And what Jesus is trying to tell the crowds who were following him was that if you follow me, truly follow me, it's going to be dangerous and even potentially divisive in your own family because what I'm advocating is pretty radical. And so be really sure you want to follow me before you continue on the way. That was Jesus' message. And for many of us, we know that that can be true. And I'm not just talking about people deciding within their own families to switch Protestant denominations. If we really live fully into what Jesus calls us to do to be disciples, it can be pretty radical. I was reminded of this very dramatically recently with an article I read in Christian Century and it essentially is telling the story of Iranians 
who are seeking asylum in England and how they've found their way because they were welcomed, the second part of Jesus' message, into community with the Church of England. The article tells the story of a man named Saman who was fleeing Iran as an asylum seeker after his home was raided and one of his close friends was arrested. Saman really felt he had to flee for his life. So he made his treacherous way to England and was told by those who were counseling him that he should go to a policeman in England and say that he was seeking asylum. He ended up in northeastern part of England and the church, community of followers of Jesus, were reaching out to Iranians seeking asylum. And there he met someone very much like himself who he found to be warm and happy and joyful. And he was really depressed. And so he asked his fellow countrymen, why are you so happy? What's giving you joy? And he started to tell him about Jesus and the happiness and the warmth that he'd found in community as he was beginning to make his way. Simon sought Jesus, the Christ, and it turned his life around. He began to experience that same sort of joy and welcome and acceptance, but it had a cost, a high cost. When his father back in Iran learned of it, he disowned him and essentially told him that he wished he'd die. I think so many of us in the United States take for granted our freedom of religion and those and the one we choose to follow. So Jesus was giving his followers in that day a very sober and clear-eyed look that picking up the cross and following him can have a cost. And those who lose their life for my sake will find it, just like Simon. And those who welcome another in my name welcome me. And those who welcome me welcome the one who sent me. It's a sobering message, but also holds the possibility for truly finding one's life, finding one's vocation, finding one's call. May that word today find its place in our call, you and me. Amen. And now let us pray in the words our Savior Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O God, our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble, we pray for all those affected by the coronavirus around the world, for the leaders of the nations that they may work together for the common good, Give public health and government officials the strength and will to act with wisdom and compassion in service to all. Remove the presence of fear and anxiety from our hearts and heal all those who are sick with the virus. 
give skill, sympathy, and resilience to all who are caring for the sick and your wisdom to those searching for a cure. Strengthen them with your spirit that through their work many will be restored to health. All these things we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace this day and always in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. At Bethlehem I had my birth. Dance then wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance in me and I'll lead you all wherever you may be and I'll lead you all in the dance in me. On the Sabbath, and I cured the lame. The holy people said it was a shame. They whipped and they stripped and they hung me.